everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a quick overview of the UEFI BIOS utility for the ASUS Z97 mainstream motherboards. As you can see, the GUI has changed a little bit. We have a little bit more here in easy mode, and we'll be going over that shortly. Then what we will we'll be doing is going to advanced mode. When we go through advanced mode, I'm just going to show you different things in advanced mode. This is specifically going to be an overview. There is so much to these new bios that I could not even cover them in three hours if I were to go deep, give you a deep dive into them. So what we're probably going to do is break it down into sections later on in the near future here and I will go over different parts of the BIOS in little maybe 10 minute stints. So let's go ahead and start up from the top left. As you can see, you have a clock and now it's very easy to change that clock just by clicking on the cog wheel. Change your times, change your date, click save and you're there. Going over, of course, you have your languages and then we have an easy tuning wizard. We'll get into that in a second. Below that is our information about the motherboard, what BIOS version you have, and of course your processor, memory, uh, the speed of the processor and your memory. In the middle is the CPU temperature, then we have our CPU voltage and motherboard temperature. Below that is our DRAM status, giving you where you're populated and what type of memory you have in those DIMM slots. To the right of that is the SATA information, what's populated, what do you have there. Below we now have an XMP button, very simple, all you got to do is just hit which profile you want and you're on and off. Part of the new easy mode is the at Intel rapid storage technology that you can turn on and off via this interface and it'll help you set up your RAID array if you want to do that. Below that we have our fan profiles. This is new. This is an easy fan tuning expert. Basically it's going to show you what fans you have connected it's going to show you the RPMs of those fans. By clicking on manual tuning, now we can go into our manual tuning modes. We can set it to silent, turbo, full speed, or manual. Now manual will give you the option to go ahead and adjust your fans. You could also change it from PWN to direct current. And by clicking on each fan, depending on where you have them populated, you could go ahead and change them also. So we'll hit escape on that and then we'll go over to the Easy System Tuning Center. Now if you remember in the other BIOS, it basically had three icons that you could click on. No, that is no longer there. Now all you do is you just click on your slider and it will bring you to your different modes on based on what you want to do with the uh, CPU. So you have power saving, you have energy saving and you have normal um, uh, performance energy saving and normal. Below that is our boot priority. This is a drag and drop. You can just change what you want to boot, how you want to boot it, where you want to boot it, just by dragging and dropping or clicking the switch all button. Now let's go ahead to the easy tuning wizard. This is going to help you tune your system either for an OC or for a RAID by either clicking OC or RAID. Click the next button after you see what you have. Select what you want, daily computing or gaming media. Click next, it'll ask you what type of cooler you have on there. If you're not sure, you could click on you could click on the question mark. After that, it will go ahead and tell you what the estimated tuning result is going to be based on what they could see from your processor. Of course, the results are going to vary with it. When you click next, it'll ask you that it'll tell you that your system might become unstable. Do you want to continue? Of course, click yes and it'll go ahead and performance tune your system for you. Let's go ahead into advanced mode and take a look at that. We'll hit F7 and we're going into advanced mode. Of course we have my favorites. My favorites is basically you can take different parts of the BIOS. Let's go up to the top and click on that. But you can take different parts of the BIOS, put it in your put it in your uh, in your box here and what it'll do is you could by pressing X4 you can go to those pages directly instead of having to go through easy mode or advanced mode. QFAN control, of course the QFAN control you saw that in the easy mode it's the same thing here. Quick note, 
Just say you have an overclock and you want to make sure that you remember it. Quick note, you could type in your little notes. You could say, okay, uh, CPU VID was 1.25. Put that in there so you know where you, where you want to go if you forgot about it. And of course with the hotkeys, they're still there. It's, it works the same way with your hotkeys. And this displays a list of your hotkeys. F5, F6, F7, it tells you where your, your quick, uh, quick selects are. Under main, of course, you still have all your information. Your BIOS information, your system time, your system date, CPU, etc. Under security, security if you want to set a password, this is where you set a password. Going over to AI Tweaker, if you are familiar with AI Tweaker, you will know this is where you, you get into the meat and potatoes of the BIOS. I'm going to go ahead and swipe this back up. I don't know why I left it on the bottom. But we'll go ahead and start from the top and just take a look. Of course, we have our CPU tur turbo frequency. We have our DRAM target. We have our target cache frequency, your DMI peg frequency, and your graphics frequency. Of course, AI overclocking tuner is still there. You could set that between XMP, manual, and auto. And as we go down, some of the very familiar steps are in here, like your multi-core enhancement, your cache ratios, your PLL over voltage, and then we have our DRAM frequency, which you can change just by the drop-down box. OC tuner is still there. You have a you have a, an option to keep your current settings, go to ratio tuning or base clock and ratio tuning. As we scroll down, we still have our extreme over voltage, full manual mode. Here is where you could set all your voltages for your system agents and they added a lot of new stuff in here. And this is why I'm going to need to go over this with you in detail and it is going to take quite a while. So if we go back up here, and we click on CPU power management and external DigiPlus power and control. This is where the DigiPlus power control is going to give you all your current capabilities and all your load line calibrations. We'll go back, click on CPU power management. Of course, this is where you're going to have your turbo modes, you're going to have your th thermal feedback, your dur duration packages, etc. So let's go over to advanced. Of course, under advanced mode, you have your network stack, and then you have all your configurations, your CPU configuration. This basically shows you your C states. It allows you to turn on and turn off hyper-threading. It allows you to pick how many processors you want to be enabled in your system. PCH configuration is the same. System uh, storage configuration, of course, this is where you're going to set your SATA Express. You're going to set your regular SATA mode, etc., and it's going to give you your SATA ports that are populated or not unpopulated, and this is where you could also set up your hot plug. Going down to the system agent configuration, no changes in this. You could change your DMI, your Northbridge PCIe configuration, or your memory configuration just by clicking on it. Let me go back to uh, the graphics configuration here and show you. If you're depending on what you're using, you're using uh, onboard graphics or a, a discrete video card, you can change it between that or you can keep it on auto. When you're using your onboard, if you want to use multi-monitors, go ahead and enable it. USB configuration gives you configuration for your USB, for your legacy, for your, if you're using Windows 8, of course, the XHCI mode for uh, USB 3.0. Platform miscellaneous configuration, this is basically your power management setups for, for your native power management. Onboard devices, here's where your, all, all your onboard devices are. You can enable them, disable them. As you can see, this has dual Intel LAN. It also has an Asmedia storage controller and an Asmedia USB 3.0 controller, Wi-Fi, 
PCIe X3 slot with the black. It's got a third slot. What do you want to put it on? Put it on auto. You can change everything from here. APM configuration. This is your power loss, your power on. And of course, your network stack configuration. Under monitor, of course, what is monitor going to do? It's going to monitor what you want, what you, your vitals. So you know how you monitor your vital signs by taking your blood pressure, your heart rate, and stuff like that? Well, this is the heartbeat of, of the diagnostics here. This is your QFAN tuning. If you click on that, it'll ask you to go into QFAN. It'll set up your QFAN, etc. Do I want to continue? Of course, I'm going to click cancel now. But it gives you your CPU temperature, your VRM temperature, your chassis fan speeds, your core voltage, everything that you need to know to diagnose your system here. Let's head on over to boot and as you can see you have your fast boot, your SATA support, your USB support, your net network stack, stack driver support and of course the next boot after power AC loss and that would be normal boot. Go ahead and look at this direct key. Basically what direct key does is when you have that enabled there is an app in your driver disk that will allow you to go directly to BIOS when you're overclocking in Windows or if you want to go to BIOS without having to worry about booting up your system. You then have your boot logo display, your boot up number stat, you have your option ROM messages, your setup mode, 4G decoding, secure boot, and then below that we have our Windows boot manager, of course, which shows you your, your boot options and priorities, and then you have your boot override options. Moving over to tools, of course, we have the ASUS Easy Flash 2 utility. Put in a, US, put in a USB, have your uh, BIOS on there, go ahead and click on it, and it'll show up for you, and you can go ahead and flash your BIOS. Setup animator is enabled, ASUS overclocking profile. Of course, the overclocking profile is the same as before. You go ahead and set up a profile. You go down to profile name, click it to save profile as profile one or whatever you'd like it to. You could either load, load the profile from a USB drive or you could save the profile in the BIOS. Go back up and finally we'll take a look at the JDEC. And the SPD information basically tells you what type of memory you have in there and what your JDEC specs are. Of course, the memory that I have in, JDEC is 1333. My XMP profile is 2400. If we go further over, it'll show you your timing set to that. Finally, on exit, of course, you have load optimized defaults, save changes and reset, discard changes and exit, and of course, finally, launch EFI shell from USB drives. To the very right here, something new, we have a hardware monitor. That shows you your CPU frequency and temperatures, your base clocks, your memory frequency, your memory voltage, and of course the voltage on your rails. Well that's been everything for the UEFI BIOS utility for the Z97 ASUS motherboards and that would be the mainstream line. Again, Keep following us. I'm really short about. I'm really sorry about this short video, but AI Tweaker does have so many different options in it. It would take me forever to go over it with you. So we're going to go ahead and do a little short on this, maybe a 20-minute video on AI Tweaker here in the near future. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay thirsty, my friends. Bye bye.